Hi guys, this is pre-algebra topic two, real numbers. In this topic, we'll we'll talk about uh, the real numbers. What are real numbers? How are real numbers used to solve problems? If you look at the topic overview, you can see that there are many many lessons in this topic. We have ten lessons in this topic as well. Um, we're going to talk about rational numbers and decimals, real numbers and cube roots and square roots, integer exponents, um, and scientific notation. Uh, we do have a lot of topic vocabularies as well. Cube root irrational number, negative exponent property, um, perfect cube, perfect square, power of powers property, power of product property, power of powers property, product of powers property, quotient of powers property. There's a lot of properties. Uh, scientific notation, if you don't know that already, square root, and zero exponent property. So we'll learn about a lot about powers and exponents later, um, and we'll go over the properties and how to deal with them. Um, but first, we're going to start with our prior knowledge. We're going to review what you know. If you, uh, these are the things that we expect you to know before we start this topic. Um, if you do not remember these vocabs or other skills in math, please go back and review these vocabs and skills before you start learning topic two. Let's look at vocabulary. Part A. A or N blank is a decimal that ends in repeating zeros. What is the type of decimal that ends in repeating zeros? So repeating zeros mean if you all the digits after that um, that final the, uh, digit in the decimal is going to be zero. So it means it ends. The decimal has an ending. What is that called? Is it a repeating decimal or a terminating decimal? By looking at repeating zero, you might think it's a repeating decimal. It is not. Repeating decimal, by definition, goes on forever with a different digit. And then two, three, four, five. And then it repeats, right? And so on. So um, terminating decimal is when it ends. So that's terminating decimal. Okay, A or N blank is a decimal in which digit or digits repeat endlessly. Now this repeat means you're repeating the decimals. So yes, this is a repeating decimal. Okay, next one. A or N blank is either a counting number, the opposite of a counting number, or zero. Is it a fraction or is it an integer? We have two options left. Could be a counting number or the opposite of a counting number, so like negative numbers um, and positive numbers of a counting number, or zero. These are called integers. And lastly, a fraction is a number that can be used to describe a part of a whole a part of a set, a location on a number line, or a division of whole numbers. Okay, these are only a few of the vocabularies you need to know prior to topic two. Let's review terminating and repeating decimals, multiplying integers, simplifying expressions. See if you can determine whether this decimal is terminating or repeat repeating. You don't have to do anything mathematically. Um, you just write down if it's terminating or repeating. So classify these decimals. And then multiplying integers, you multiply them and figure out each product. Simplifying expressions, you simplify and figure out each product. Okay, so these, you need to figure out answers and compute them. These, just classify what type of decimal it is. See if you can do it by yourself. Come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, are you ready? What is number 5? Five? 5.692. It ends at 692. 
and it doesn't have any dots like that, so it doesn't continue. So you can see that there are invisible zeros after the last digit. So this is terminating decimal. It ends. Terminating. Okay. Number six, uh, the two repeats, negative 0 0.2222222222 dot 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 dot, right? So that's a repeating decimal. Number seven, 7, 7.0001. It's a terminating decimal. Number eight, seven point two eight 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 eight. This is another form of writing repeating decimals um, by writing a bar over the repeating digits. So if there are two digits that are repeating, you put a bar over the two digits, or if you look at number nine, one point one seven eight, there is a bar over the three digits. So you have three digits repeating, one point one seven eight. 178, 178, 178, dot, dot, dot. So that is a repeating decimal. Number 10, negative 4.03479 is a terminating decimal. That wasn't too hard, right? All right, let's look at it. 11. Find each product. You multiply 2 times 2. That dot means you multiply. So 2 times 2 is positive 4. What is negative 5 times negative 5. If you multiply negative by a negative, you should get a positive. The negatives cancel out. So negative 5 times negative 5 is a positive. 5 times 5, 25. Number 13, 7 times 7 is 49. What about negative 6 times negative 6 times negative 6? You multiply negative and then negative, it cancels out, it becomes positive. But positive times a negative is a negative. So 6 times 6 times 6 would be uh, 216, but it's a negative 216. 10 times 10 times 10. 10 cubed is 1,000. And number 16, negative 9 times negative 9 times a negative 9 should be a negative 729. Check your answers. Simplifying expressions. You simplify these expressions. What do you do first? You need to solve the parentheses first and add uh, the two products. So 4 times 10 is equal to 40 plus 5 times 100 is 500 and that will give you 540. Okay. Number 18, you should get 270. Number 19, you should get 590. Number 20, it's a big number, 9,040. Number 21, 2,800. Number 22, 720. So check all your answers. See if you know how to do these by yourself and you know the vocabularies before we move on to lesson one. Language development. We're going to fill in these uh, word map with new terms, definitions, and supporting examples or illustrations. So we're going we're gonna to learn these vocabularies later on so you can do it one by one. But I'm going to go over some key vocabularies. Um, that are very important in this topic. So the first one um, is going to be a perfect square. And the definition of a perfect square is a number that is the square of an integer. You will learn about it in more detail uh, later on but it is a number that is a square of an integer. So in this example or illustration, you can make a square on the grid line. That's four by four. So a number that is a square of an integer, so four square is 16. So 16 is a number that is a square of an integer. So it's a perfect square, okay? The next term we're gonna look at is a perfect cube. What is a perfect cube then? 
It is very similar to perfect square. Can you guess? It's a number that is the cube of an integer instead of a square. So we can draw another example. We can draw a cube now. So draw a cube that has all the same dimensions for its width, its height, and its length. So 3 cubed is 27. So 27 is a number that is a cube of an integer. So 27 is a perfect cube. We were talking about these numbers. These are called perfect square, perfect cube. Okay. And if you're confused, that's fine. We'll go over it again in the lesson. The next vocabulary you're going to see in this topic is a square root. What is a square root? Square root is actually the reverse of the square of a number. What does a reverse mean? Reverse means the opposite. So you're going the opposite way. Um, for example, if you have a square root 64, that is 8 because 8 square is 64. So if you see 64, you square root it, you're figuring out the number that is squared to get to that number that is square rooted. Does that make sense? So let's add some more examples and illustrations. So you're going to read this. So the square root of 64 is 8. And it is 8 because 8 times 8 is equal to 64. The next one, can you guess what the next one is? We got a square root, so we're going to have a cube root as well. Cube root is the reverse of the cube of a number. So what's an example for a cube root? A perfect cube. Let's pick a perfect cube. The cube root of 216 is... 6, because 6 cubed is 6 times 6 times 6, and that's equal to 216. So you're going to read this um, as cube root of 216 is 6. And it's 6 because 6 times Six times six times six is two hundred and sixteen. Okay. And the last vocabulary we're gonna look at is scientific notation. Of course, there are a lot of other vocabularies that we're gonna see in this topic. So these are the key vocabularies that I think are very important. Scientific notation is a way of expressing numbers that are just too large or too small so that we can convert to be conveniently uh, to, to be conveniently written in decimal form. Okay, so for an example, if we have a big number such as 7 million, right? That's a big number. And if we want to compare big numbers with other big numbers, and it is convenient to have a scientific notation. So uh, this example is not complicated, but um, you might have a big number that is like 
billion and 227 million and 673,123, right? So there could be a lot of a lot of complications when I, when whenever you get infant like really big number or really small number. So we're going to use scientific notation to compare big numbers and small numbers. Okay? So uh, for example, 7 million could be written as 7 times 10 to the power of 6. Okay. If you multiply 7 times 10 to the power of 6, which is a million, you get a 7 million. Okay. So this is just another form of expressing really big numbers and a small number. Alright, let's start with lesson one in the next video.